Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial. We're going to be looking at how to get the twinkly lights uh, working in X lights and FPP or Falcon Pipe Player. Um, so without further ado, let's head over to our Windows computer and get X lights set up. So here we are at our Windows computer. Um, I've got a, for all intents and purposes, fresh uh, setup of X lights um, and as we can see uh, I have the uh, twinkly lights uh, ready to go here on my desk uh, as well um, so they're currently powered on and plugged in we've got uh, the re the receiver part is connected to our Wi-Fi um, and the, the lights are ready to go so these are twinkly uh, string there's 400 of uh, the LEDs and uh, the RGBW um, variety. So we're, we're going to have to do a bit of special setup to get those working in X lights as well. So heading over to X lights, the first thing we're going to want to do if we want to be able to test them uh, in real time as we're making our sequences uh, is uh, going ahead and setting them up as a device. So we select an Ethernet device. Uh, we can go ahead in here. I'm going to call these uh, Twinkly uh, String 400. Um, I'm going to leave the description blank. I don't really care. We're going to set them as active. We're going to turn off auto size. This doesn't seem to work. And um, we're going to change our type over to Twinkly. Now, I know the IP address for these is 10.0.1.20. Of course, that's going to change depending on your network setup. And then we're going to have to work out the number of channels. So in my case, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up our calculator. Uh, we've got 400 uh, pixels and we have four channels because they're red, green, blue, white. And that gives us a total of 1600 channels. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that in here. There we go. And that's all done. Uh, I'll do it properly. 1600 presenter. There we go. Um, so we'll notice we, we've got a green light down here saying that we, we can connect to that. Um, we've got the right protocol done. We've got the right number of channels. We don't have any models assigned to it. We don't really mind anything else. Uh, it is active. So we're going to go ahead and click the, the red save button that we had. And I'm going to click it again just to make sure it's saved. So there we go. That's, that's set up in terms of controllers. The next thing we're going to want to do is add them into our layout. I, I'm going to do this uh, very simply. I'm going to get a uh, straight line um, and I'm going to do them as a string. I'm going to call these as twinkly uh, for a uh, string. Oh, string, not sting. 400. There we go. One string, we're going to add uh, 400 nodes. Um, that's going to become a very <laughs> solid line. Um, we've not got a controller. Uh, the start channel, we're going to want to... Um, we're going to go ahead to want to uh, use the start channel. I'm just going to set it as starting at one. I'm... That means that it, you'll see in here, we're going to start at channel one. We're going to end at uh, 1200 because we've not set it as an RGBW node yet. Um, the one thing if you do in here is if you go ahead and set it, um, it sometimes breaks the, the, the channel number. Um, so it will suddenly start at channel two for some reason. Don't know why. Um, but you can go ahead and select it as the, the twinkly string 400. Just make sure your channel numbers seem reasonable. So the port and protocol actually in this case doesn't matter. Um, in my opinion, they should be hidden when you are selecting uh, a Twinkly uh, device. Um, but I am gonna go ahead and need to change the type of node we have um, as these are the RGBW nodes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have tested that they are actually RGBW. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and select those. And the second thing we need to do is RGBW color handling. Um, so we need to change this to advanced. I don't know what these different options are. Um, I think RGB arrow W means that the red, green, blue 
um, value will then equal the white pixel, um, I believe is, is sort of what that means. RGB only obviously is going to only send the RGB data. White only is only going to send the white data. Uh, advanced seems to just map them as a four channel pixel and white on all, I don't know. All right, so I'm just going to do uh, advanced because uh, that gives me the uh, option that I'm looking for. So that's that. We've clicked our save button. We're going to go ahead and head over to our sequencer and we're going to build a very quick sequence. Now, what I'm going to do uh, now is I'm actually going to bring you up the um, the view that's going to show you the lights as well as X lights. So there we go. Uh, and that way you can see uh, sort of what's going on there as well. Um, so I'm going to bring the volume of our music right down uh, just so that we don't try and avoid any content matches. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new sequence. It's going to be a musical sequence. I'm, I'm going to select uh, my twinkly demo. We've got back in time from the back to the future, the musical. We're going to go ahead and do it at 40 frames per second because it's a relatively small uh, setup. Generally, if you're going to be running a lot of twinkle lights over Wi-Fi, make sure you've got a good Wi-Fi setup. If you don't know how to deal with Wi-Fi setups, you probably want to head into the Facebook groups and someone like myself or somebody else uh, good with networking might be able to help you. But generally, you are going to want to uh, sort of improve your Wi-Fi, uh, particularly as most wireless routers tend to be on the inside. But we'll talk a little more about that at the end of this tutorial um, so that you don't need to skip things. So we're going to just select our quick start and there we go. We've got our strings, we've got our music and we're ready to go ahead and program. And the easiest way to program an entire song is to take the butterfly effect, stretch it out for the duration of the song and there we go. We're the best programmers in the world. Now you'll notice that down here the physical lights aren't doing anything. We just need to go ahead and knock our output to lights on and we can see there um, that we are outputting to the lights. Um, now the colours don't seem to be right on mine. Don't know why. They were fine the previous time I ran through this tutorial. So let's maybe go and have a look at what's going on there. I have a feeling it's going to be a case uh, of the uh, channels being in the wrong order. Um, let's try WRGB. It could be that with that uh, numbers being wrong previously. There we go. They are WRGB. I don't know why I didn't trust what I tested in FPP. It all told me that it was uh, WRGB, but hey ho, we all make mistakes. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate our uh, full test um, for the uh, FPP side is I'm actually going to add a few more effects. So I'm going to add a bar effect in um, and I'm just going to put this right at the beginning and we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to do it there and we're going to do it up to that section. I'm going to set these to uh, chase through white, red, green and blue so we can double check that we're outputting the right things. We're going to do 10 cycles of this and we can see there that they're just scrolling through uh, those. So if we were to select white, we've got white. If we were to select red, we've got red. If we select green, we've got green. If we were to select blue, we've got blue. So those are right and it should be scrolling through white, red, green, blue. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a nice twinkle effect on. I just like the way um, that it, it looks in terms of uh, the um, white LEDs. Um, which are a bit of a warmer white on, on these pixels, um, which I think just looks really nice. Um, so we're going to go ahead and increase the percentage of light that we have doing this effect. And I'm going to leave that there. And then we're just going to do our butterfly effect right through to the end of the song. That's all good. I'm going to stop output and I'm going to stop my playback. I'm going to save this and we're just going to 
put this in our sequence folder, call it back in time. And we're going to call this video demo so we can make sure we get the right one in FPP. Click render. There we go. We've rendered the sequence. Click render again because we don't trust the loading bar and we're all done. I'm going to head over to uh, the FPP connect in our tools and we can see there we've got our uh, FPP master. I'm going to select this sequence to be uploaded. We are also going to upload uh, our UDP outputs, which is going to configure FPP to have the correct outputs as well. And we're just going to go ahead and click upload. And there we go. That's all done. If we head over to our FPP instance, we can see the video demo uh, frame sequence is now available on FPP. The audio was already there, so that's not been overwritten. And that's everything there. If we go to our channel outputs, we can see Twinkly String 400 is here. The universe size is uh, 1,600. We're starting at channel one, we're ending at 1,600. That's all configured and done. Um, I do have the advanced uh, UI on, and also currently within FPP, um, this, let's not restart my computer right now, thank you. Um, this will also, you might have some issues if you're not running the absolute latest version of FPP. Um, so this is currently running from master rather than the uh, version six um, download that you can run. Um, the version 6.0 public release uh, has a bug in it that prevents you from setting the universe size correctly um, for, for twinkly output types. Um, there is a fix that's already been done um, by Daniel. Um, so that's going to be available in the later versions of uh, version 6, so probably like version 6. Point whatever, any of the, the minor updates that come out. Um, but for now, you do need to be running master. Um, if you don't know how to do that, um, we can head over to FPP uh, settings, UI set to developer, and then uh, that's automatically saved. And then you go over to developer and you select the Git branch as master. And that will make sure you're running the version that is the latest code available on GitHub. Um, you might have other bugs that spring up as, as because of this, but for now, to get this video working, that's what I have to do. Your mileage will vary in the future because obviously that that change will already be available. Um, but if it's not working, that's why. If you're limited to uh, 512 channels in your universe size, that's why. Um, so just so you're aware, and obviously we've got more than 512 channels here. So that's all configured. F uh, FPP has got all of those settings from Xlights. Um, the last thing to do in this demo video is going to be running the uh, system and we go there. Now, I have a feeling, yeah, that, that did the wrong colors. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with the twinkle. We'll get through all of those. There we go. Oh, we are twinkling, right? It's just the start of the, the sequence is, uh, goes by so quickly, I guess. Fantastic. So there we go. We've got white twinkles. We've got all our colors working. Uh, we'll get into a butterfly effect in a second. Um, but let's take a moment to uh, talk about Wi-Fi. So if you're going to be running a lot of uh, twinkly um, setups um, obviously all of those are going to be using uh, wi-fi to send the data from fpp um, over to uh, the um, wireless receiver within the twinkly lights now the big thing to remember is like that's actually quite a lot of data you're going to be sending um you know 1600 channels worth of data uh, if you're running at uh, 40 frames a second it's going to be, you know, every, what, 30 milliseconds, I think, you're going to be trying to get data over to those. I apologise for my camera glitching. I'm, I don't know what's up with it. It just doesn't like being a camera today. Uh, let's head over to the FPP screen and I'll just do a voiceover. So you're going to be sending all that data all that time. Um, you know, every 33 milliseconds you need to get data over um, and, and quite a lot of it. 
So you're going to need to have a good uh, Wi-Fi setup. Now, in my opinion, um, you, you want an access point closer to the receivers. Um, if you're going to be putting all of these outside, um, then it's, it's, it's probably worth, um, you know, actually putting the time in and installing an access point for your lights outside. Um, that's what we have in our case. Um, we, we already had Ethernet going out there um, for various controllers, um, so adding uh, an access point wasn't too difficult. Um, segmenting your networks is also going to really help. Um, so if you are wanting a simpler network setup, literally just buy a new router um, and uh, just put that either at a window at the front of your house or, or wherever your lights are located or outside in a waterproof box um, and, and just run your entire show network segmented off your uh, main network that runs your house. Uh, if you're wanting to get internet to your show network, the way you would do that is you would take uh, a connection from your main network as the LAN and you would plug that into the WAN port of your show network. Um, that's going to give you what is technically known as a double NAT. Um, so port forwarding and things is more complex. So if you're wanting to access um, FPP, uh, you know, remotely, you're going to have to set up port forwarding on your show network router. Um, but you wouldn't need to be doing that on your main internet router. Um, a lot of these things are a little more complex, but ultimately what you want um, to, to get the best performance out of things like Twinkly or um, the ESP sticks is to have a, a separate wireless network. Make sure it's on a channel that isn't hugely congested. Um, so there are various applications for um, I, uh, well, iOS can't really do it because of restrictions within uh, Apple, um, but within Android you can. Uh, there are various uh, systems for Mac and for Windows uh, that can help you uh, scan the various different wireless channels. Some wireless access points and wireless routers will also let you scan. Generally, don't go with an auto. Um, you'll get much better performance out of wireless networks if they're manually set. As with most things, the computers will decide at a random second to change to a different wireless channel because it thinks it's less congested. And all of a sudden, it's actually the most congested channel uh, that's available. So do your, do your research. Um, learn a bit more about wireless networking. Don't expect it to just you know plug in and work. There is a little bit of uh, learning that you're probably going to have to do. But that's what's great about this hobby is there's a lot of people out there who want to help you in, uh, in, in getting those working. So that was a somewhat brief overview on how to get Twinkly lights working within X lights and within uh, FPP. Now, one last thing to note, if you're like me and you do your main show designing on X lights on Mac, that is an issue with outputting to um, Twinkly lights from the Mac build. Um, I've will file a bug report. Um, I have also mentioned it in the Facebook post that I was doing about getting all of this working. Um, so I think Daniel's aware. I, but yeah, currently the Mac version uh, does not output to Twinkly. If you try, it will just crash. Um, so it's it's not a, it partially works, it's just it doesn't work. Um, I think it also struggles when it's rendering the channel outputs um, because the uh, frame sequence files that I have from X lights on Mac only seems to do the first 512 channels as well. Um, but I'm, I've, I've not delved too deeply into that yet. I, and, and I'm gonna try and, and delve in uh, a little deeper uh, when I get some time. Uh, but generally, at the moment, the Mac, the Mac build doesn't seem to work, but Windows works fine. Um, so, so there's that. Uh, not tried the Linux build. I'll, I'll leave that for someone else. I'm, I, I can't be bothered booting my Linux machine up to, to test that. But there you go. If this has been helpful, um, please feel free to leave a like on the video as every YouTuber would ask for. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to use the comments. Um, I'm not the best at X lights or networking. Um, you might be better to ask in the usual uh, Facebook forums and, and Facebook groups uh, and various internet forums as well, uh, if, if you're really struggling with various things in X lights. But generally, this is how you get uh, the 
uh, twinkly systems set up in our two favorite bits of software. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the future, maybe at some point. Who knows? Bye-bye.